Hi, Sally Maxwell here, and I'd like to take you on a trip through my working studio. As you can hear, the birds are joining me this morning. I have this in my studio just to remind me of where it all began. My mother actually saved this old drawing from when I was about six or seven years old. Yes, this is the kind you've all done in school. You put a layer of crayon down and then you either put black paint over the top or black crayon and you scratch through it using your fingernail or a stub of a pencil or that type of thing. Seven years old, I practiced my signature on the back of it. many times. This actually was my very first scratch board attempt. Don't ask me why I chose the subject matter, but I did go on to do all sorts of things from trying to get rid of the whole background, advertisements for restaurants using a very woodcut type style. Before, this was during my graphic arts time period and before I had discovered color. This is my general working area. It is an architect's desk, uh, antique, I love it. It's got all sorts of flat drawers that I don't use because they're swollen shut. It's at a perfect angle for me and I can either use my roll around stool or I can stand and work. Two different lighting sources here besides the north light out the window right in front of it and the west light that I muted by putting a covering over the deck out on that side and good old incandescent light plus fluorescent and then an ot light. This gives me many different sources and many different colors that come up. Uh, underneath you'll see my four leaf clovers and my mirror. It's a little bit of feng shui. Uh, but this desk is, has got a beautiful patina on it and I love it. Working on just a tiny little rabbit right now, an eight by 10. And this is a, something that I discovered. This gets rid of a lot of your dust as you're working on it. My nail tech used them, so I had her order me one. Much better than trying to blow it off uh, or wipe it off with any of the cloths. Uh, anyway, getting set right over here to do some color work. Not on this, but I usually gang up a whole bunch of my work, that's technical terms, before I do any coloring because once I've mixed it, if you allow the ink to dry, it hardens. It's not like watercolor. As you can see, inks are down in here. These are all of the lovely uh, India ink colored markers that I use. I use these on the final um, part of coloring, just to dab a little bit of color here and there in it. And then I do my beautiful floral pieces and my fish pieces in it. As a matter of fact, there's one sitting on my other drawing board right here ready for me to trace off onto the white clay board. Here's some of my uh, Lasco sitting on the tabaret. I'll go in for a close up so you can see exactly what type it is. UV Protect 2 or 3 are the ones that I use for the most part. I'll do a quick sweep of the studio. You can see this is a finished work waiting for framing and my camera's set up. The camera's not out, but that's where I will set it up if I feel anything interesting is coming in on my leg down below. This is my works in progress wall. You can see I've got a big piece up on the top, 24 by 48. It's a cattle laying down in a group called the gathering. And I think it'll be really pertinent to work on right now since we're not able to gather during our COVID. COVID, see COVID is the name of the piece below it. COVID-19 experience that we're going through right now. Uh, you can see a stack over on the end of that countertop. That's a lot of photographs that I work from. Um, I use them for inspiration. I'll go over and rifle through them until I come across one that really appeals to me right at the time. I try not to force myself to do things that I'm not interested in working on because they don't turn out all that well. You can see another ot light here focusing down on this little drawing board. What happens when I do this is on the uh, colored marker drawings, they need to dry and get very hard in between layering or uh, putting another color over the top. There's only 48 colors 
available. So to get any subtle nuance of it, you have to erase back off the color and then put a different color over the top. It's complicated. I don't think I can ever really teach how to do it. Uh, it's an instinctual type thing, but it's gorgeous when it's done. As you can see, I'm going up above. More natural light. I love this. Um, the far end of the studio, past my big four by eight work table, is kind of a jumbled mess right now. It's where I store some of my uh, boxes that I'm going to be using for shipping. There's a lot of bubble wrap and foam that's uh, being reused from things that have been sent to me. I do recycle, I love to do that. Um, books, lots of books and boxes and frames, etc., all stacked in the corner. Pictures that I'm, uh, paintings that I've done of my children and anything from oils, pastels, the clayboard markers, um, just lots of different things, memories up that staircase. And here are pieces waiting for me to frame them. Framing is something that I have to break away from my artwork and do, and I try to put it off often way too long. And what you see right over there is my cat tree. It's a homemade one. We cut down a lot of pine trees in order to make the lake here. And I saved one of the larger parts of the trunk and turned it into a cat tree. Of course, my cat likes to climb the stairs the easy way and then jump down onto the top of it. But anyway, it gets put to use. Um, around here, I'm gonna do a real quick pan because there's my year to date. I still have to do that to see what I'm doing and when. And this is my computer setup with all my data and it's a total mess, but that's the way it is folks. So I will give you another tour later of my collection of other artists work. Thanks for joining me.